Are we ready? Are we rolling? I'm Steve from 123 3D. Today, we are going to be doing an honest review of the Ender 3 V3 KE. So, I'm going to go over a full overview of the machine, the hardware, what you're getting for your money. It's very similar to the, the other model that we stock, which is the Ender 3 V3 SE. The link will be in the description for that review. The build volume for this machine is exactly the same. So you have a 220mm by 220mm by 240mm build volume. Perfectly adequate for new users and people that are quite happy printing multiple parts or slicing bigger parts to join together later on down the line. Print speed. This machine runs on Creality OS, which is basically a trimmed down version of Clipper. What they've done is they've removed some of the more advanced features from Clipper, put it into their own software package, but have allowed root access. So if you did want to unlock more features from Clipper, you can do. Typical print speed, this machine will print at 300 millimeters a second. It's more than capable of doing that, provided your prints aren't too high because obviously it's a bed slinger so that will induce wobble the machine accepts standard 1.75 millimeter filament and comes pre-fitted with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle the machine also has a filament runout sensor fitted as stock comes with a textured pei build plate has a maximum print temperature of 300 degrees on the nozzle and 100 degrees on the print bed making it a capable machine to print with various materials such as pla pet g TPU, ABS, and ASA to name but a few. The machine also has a nice 4.3 inch touch screen, which is ideal for people who want a nice user interface. And again, this is available at 123.3d.co.uk. So next we'll have a, an in-depth look at the design of the machine and the build quality along with the features of the machine. So this machine again is very similar looking to the Ender 3 V3 SC model. They have saved money by the plastic base. Don't be put off by this. The plastic base, as I'll show later in the video, has a very strong aluminium brace across the whole machine that basically fixes all the metal components together. So the plastic is effectively just a shell. The plastic cross brace at the top and cutting down on aluminium extrusions. Like I've said in the other video review, these extrusions are very well made. They're actually a T profile, so they're extremely rigid. This bed runs backwards and forwards on smooth rails. The bearings are fixed to the bottom of the bed, so this allows the bed to move nice and freely backwards and forwards. The rails are spread quite wide apart. Benefit of this, you will end up with a more stable build platform. The bed is driven by a, a belt where the stepper motor is underneath inside the base. The belt literally connects to the bottom of the bed, travels the motion forwards and backwards. Really simple, nice and easy. To tension the belt, quite simply, check its tension. If it needs to be tightened up any, there is a little Allen screw on the back of there. Give it a turn check the tension again, you're good to go. Briefly, talk about the build plate. Creality have started to fit most of their machines with a flexible magnetic build plate over glass that they used to do on the older machines. This one is a texture PEI build plate. Basically, it's spring steel. On the actual build plate itself, you've got a magnetic base. To the back of there, there is two location screws that line up with these two nicks in the actual build plate. So all you have to do, is pop the build plate, locate it on the screws, drop it down, and away you go. This is a direct drive extruder named the Sprite Extruder. It's very similar to the old Sprite Extruder that everybody else will be quite familiar with. They've basically added a plastic cover to the extruder, hiding all of the internals that you would have seen before on the open unit. Slimmed it down a little bit and basically made it more compact looking. Absolutely fantastic. One of the other benefits, direct drive extruders will allow you to print quicker because of the nature of the extruder and how it pulls the filament in a, opposed to pushing it by the old Bolden system. There's no need to be finicking around adjusting V-wheels and everything like that because they've worn out or they're not quite tight from the factory. You, you don't get that problem with this machine. That's driven again via a belt, which again, periodically you just check the tension and adjust if you need to via the screw at the end here. The machine comes fitted one stepper motor that drives the lead screw, which synchronizes via a belt 
to the other leaf screw giving you a nice equal motion up and down you can see at the back of the machine you've got uh, your cr touch probe which would have been traditionally fitted on the side of the extruder in previous generation models one of the key features for this machine that allows it to print at ridiculously high speeds especially with pla as some of you know it requires a lot of cooling to print successfully otherwise you just end up with a big pile of mush on your build plate you have got two-way ducting two fans that are basically cooling the model from both sides of the extruder which is very, very efficient, and we've printed some serious overhangs on this machine in PLA with no problems at all. Very, very efficient, good method of cooling. The extrusion. So, as I mentioned, the extrusion design has changed. You've got this now, I can only describe as a T-shaped profile. So you've got a nice, big, wide, flat face that hides everything behind you from the front, and then on the back, this is where your wheels run up and down. Now they've machined this in such a way that the V-wheels, the profile and the taper of the V-wheels runs really nicely up and down the actual grooves in the profile. So you've got maximum surface area contact, which is going to produce minimal wear on these wheels. There's no real adjustment needed here. They're snugged up nicely and they literally run on two wheels each side, opposed to the three that you would have had on the other side. So again, really, really simple, nice, easy design. You don't need to adjust anything with this setup. So moving up, at the front you've got this nice profile that hides all the mechanics behind the machine. This is then joined together with this brace at the top, with your filament holder and your filament run-out sensor. The injection moulded top brace has really, really dense reinforcement underneath to stop any, any flex. My only criticism for this would be, I wouldn't run anything on it larger than a 1.1 kilogram spool of filament, purely because you don't want it bouncing around but there'd be no problems with printing it from a table mounted filament holder should you choose to do that. Now, the filament run out sensor, a lot of people see it as a necessity and it is a really handy addition to any 3D printer. Basically what this will do is if your filament runs out, you've undercalculated, you haven't got enough on the machine to, to do a print, the filament sensor will tell the main board the filament's run out and it will then automatically pause the machine while keeping the bed at the given temperature so you don't end up with a print separating from the print bed and it'll basically wait for you to come and reload more filament and resume the print or cancel the print. So the option's there. It comes with power outage, so if there is any issues where you accidentally flick off the socket or there's a power cut for any reason, you can resume the print. You know, this can be a frustrating thing if you're 24 hours into a print, the power goes out, print's failed, not anymore. And I found with these, with these machines, this resume function does work. It's very accurate at picking up where it left off and you'll see very, very minimal under extrusion at the beginning of a, of a print. So it makes it perfectly salvageable. Overall build quality for the machine. Honestly, for the price, this machine is perfectly adequate. We've done numerous tests with this machine and it hasn't failed. It is more than capable of producing high quality prints that are accurate and consistent. So again, in-depth review, I'll show you guys what you'd expect to find inside this machine. So we start off with the 350 watt power supply, Creality branded, very tidy. All the crimp terminals are screwed in nice and securely. The wiring is all held in place. We've zippy ties to the chassis. We've got ferrule connectors into the main board, which are a nice addition. All of the plugs are secured with hot glue. This basically stops anything wiggling and coming loose during transit and the high speed printing. The stepper motor for the bed, again, took nicely out of the way inside the base. Overall, I can't really fault it. And as I mentioned before, you've got this really nice brace that basically spans the full width of the machine where your gantry fixes to. So it provides a really rigid, solid platform. I'll go over the assembly process for the machine. Again, really, really simple. I'll flip it up on its side first of all, so you can see what needs to be done under here. When you get the machine, the main gantry is separate from the base. You literally fix that via six screws under here. There's a cable that plugs in. That's that part under there, done. Then you have a screen mount, which again fixes to the side of the machine. There is three screws that screw into heat inserts into the plastic base. You then clip the screen on, plug the screen in. That part's done. Flip around to the back. So then you have this cable which you plug 
the small plug into the stepper motor, the large plug into the extruder. You then simply fit the cable strain relief, that part done. The machine then requires you to fix the filament spool holder, which comes with the, the filament runout sensor already attached to it. You plug that in, that part's done. You can then plug in the machine, power it on, follow the on-screen display instructions. Nice and simple. Okay, so next I'll talk about the touchscreen display, the firmware and all that type of thing. So the software aspects of, of a machine, if you like. Like I previously mentioned, you've got a nice color touchscreen display, which is a very simple to navigate UI. On here, you've got the functionality to connect to Wi-Fi. You've got all the system information and there is even a, an option for a camera. Now, to this point, I'm not sure what cameras are going to be compatible with the machine. However, that said, on the side of the screen, you have got two standard USB sockets and on the back of the screen, there is a USB socket, which tells me that some point in the future, the function to add cameras to this machine will be very possible. Here, we can select the time zone. We can select the self-test. We can select bind to Corelity Cloud if you want to connect it via the app. One good thing with the machine is that you have the ability, once you've connected the machine to Wi-Fi, you can then remotely update the printer firmware. For those of you who will be very familiar with the older series of Ender, where you need to flash the screen with firmware, then flash the main board with firmware, all done via SD cards and that kind of thing, dragging and dropping bin files and all of that good stuff. This is simple. You click update, the machine updates, you reboot it, you're done. It's as simple as that. My only recommendation would be don't always jump on to update to the latest firmware. Let the firmware be released for a couple of weeks, see that it's stable, there's no reported faults with it. Then when it's proven to be reliable and stable, then by all means update the firmware. So this simply a case of clicking the button, update, let it do its thing, the machine will restart, you're ready to go. Once you've done the firmware update, I'd always recommend running the cell check again. You want to level the bed in case that information has been wiped from the machine and let it do any other cell checks that it needs to do to make sure that everything is working correctly before you start printing again. I'm going to briefly talk about slicers and the software that I would recommend for beginners to use and then how you may advance to other slicers and the benefits of doing so later on down the line. I always try and recommend that beginners who have got no prior 3D printing experience start with the software Creality provide with the machine, which is Creality Print. The reason for that is Creality have tuned that slicer to work with their own machines. So for the beginner, it's a very easy way to get up and printing without having to tweak, tune and fiddle around with slice profiles. From my testing, Creality Print works very well straight off the bat without any tuning for these range of printers. For the more experienced users, there's nothing at all stopping you guys from going and using Orca Slicer. The profile has been added to Orca Slicer for this machine now. So again, there is a default profile set in Orca Slicer if you want the more advanced features from a, a premium slicing program. Uh, I will be doing a video later on down the line about slicing software, how to use it, my recommendations, do's and don'ts, that type of thing. That'll be in another video. Like I mentioned earlier on, Creality have basically shipped the machine with a trimmed down version of Clipper, which they've renamed Creality OS. They have allowed root access for the machine, which will enable the more experienced users to access root access, get this machine connected to fluid or mainsail, basically unlocking the machine's full potential. But again, this wouldn't be something that I recommend newbies do because it can be quite in depth and quite overwhelming for you to break the machine and you would end up having to go back and factory reset and everything else, provided you've not damaged anything on the actual machine. print quality of the machine we've tested this machine rigorously and i mean rigorously we've really put it through its paces has it failed no we will show pictures of the things that we have printed on this machine it surprised us and it will surprise you guys there is a link in the description to another video that we pushed the boundaries of this machine to see what it would cope with and it shocked us the overall print quality is second to none there's no ringing there's no ghosting 
there's nothing really abnormal about any prints that you get off this machine at high speed at all. Overall, I cannot fault the quality of this machine regards to print quality. Pros and cons for this machine. The pros, for the price, you couldn't buy a machine of the equivalent spec for the same price. Creality have been very, very clever in the way that they've engineered this machine to cut costs, not really sacrifice on quality of the end result. They've allowed and opened up the world of 3D printing to people who are on a budget but want to dabble in 3D printing. This machine we sell regularly to beginners, even to experienced 3D printers who all come back and say the same thing. This machine is reliable, it's affordable, they're happy with the overall results that this machine produces. The cons. So Creality, they offered their own version of Clipper. They could have given the user a little bit more functionality in the machine, but they have made this accessible by allowing root access. However, to me, they could have given you this straight out of the box. Is it a negative? Well, to most people, probably not. To the people who want webcam connectivity and stuff like that straight away, then maybe it would be. But again, these functions, I can see very clearly, you will be able to add them down the line. The other points to mention, with it having it, this injection molded base, on the predecessors, we had a nice little storage drawer for all your bits and pieces, because this case is basically holding all of the components for the machine. You don't have that. If you do want any storage, you're going to have to make your own. Either it be a stand-on unit or you fix it to the side of the machine. The other parts are really, really trivial little items like the flexibility that you may encounter if you were trying to print really quickly at full height. This, to me, is why Core XY machines come into their own opposed to a bed slinger machine like this is because no matter how fast you're printing, if you're printing low objects at high speed, you don't have any issue. Once you get up to here, you're gonna get an exaggerated wobble in the prints. But again, if you're happy and you slow the machine down, it really isn't an issue. This will be the same for any machine that's running Clipper or Clipper based software that prints at this speed that's a bed slinger you know that's just physics pretty much that is it overall we've put this machine well and truly through its paces and it still performs for me this would be a really good entry level machine for anybody that's wanting to dabble in high speed 3d printing on a budget because to me you're not really sacrificing a huge amount from this machine that is a budget grade machine effectively. It is as simple as screwing the gantry on out of the box, plugging in the, the stepper motors and the extruder, plug the screen in, follow the on-screen calibration and you're away printing. It's really as easy as that. As I said, this machine is available from 123.3d.co.uk. The link is in the description. So if you'd like to compare this machine, the Ender 3 V3 KE versus the Ender 3 V3 SE, check out that video. That may help you make your mind up on which machine is going to be right for you. Is this one worth the little bit extra? In my opinion, if you can stretch for a little bit more money, I would recommend that you buy this machine because you do get the additional features, i.e. the run out sensor, the higher speed printing, the capability for Wi-Fi printing and all of that good stuff. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices in the UK. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream UK retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we will do our very best to beat their price. Oh,